January, it's about uh, 12 degrees, um, winds gentle, sort of west, northwesterlies, westerlies, switching a little bit south, west, southwest. Um, air pressure's 1010. Still feeling confident after last week, so I'm going to show you the, the ground baits I use now. So, so here we go with the ground bait. There's some cell micro pellet. I put some Bait Tech Scopex sweet corn, only a handful, very small handful. Remember, it's February. <laughs> um, some Cop Dot Mill Protein Plus Tension Bream. I've then put some brown, brown, black crumb to colour it up a little bit so it nearly matches the bottom. I've then got uh, some micro pellets. And you see they're about a meal and a half and a little tiny bit of uh, bloodworm ground bait in there. Again, that's a little bit of colour, a little bit of flavour. I'm going to put eight balls out, um, this sort of size. Uh, and on top of that, I'm going to put six, uh, three spots. This is my swim. You can see the wind quite gentle. Um, I like it when it's uh, flat, ideally. You get to see everything that even thinks about touching the surface. But at least if a, if a bream was to roll or a tinch, <laughs> he says jokingly, but who knows? A carp crashes out, I'm going to see it with it's this, uh, this calm. So, next job, get the rods out. So, this is my first rig going out. Um, you can see I've got a medium sized feed, I've got a heavy lead on it, 60 grams. Um, there's a hook. A size 9 dread and barbel hook uh, with a worm on the hair and a bit of that Scopex sweet corn below it. Above the feeder I've got a stop bead and the idea behind that is when the fish picks the feeder up you've got that amount of free movement before they get any resistance hence the heavier lead on the bottom um, and then my rig here, there's a quick change attached to the main line with a bit of silicone over the top and a swivel bit of silicone over that. And I'll show you what happens with that little bead halfway down the hook length, two ticks. So let's see if I can do this and show you at the same time. So I've filled my feeder up with ground bait. I've left a little bit of gap in the bottom. Then what I'll do, I'll just turn that around and pop that up there. I'm going to have to uh, do this and then show you what I've done. Funny you could do with three hands really. <laughs> so what I've done is I've pushed the bead into the ground bait and I left a little bit of gap for a little bit of a little bit more ground bait. That way when I cast out there's no chance of that hook length spinning over the top of the feeder because this time of the year the last thing you want is to have your rods out for four, six, eight hours, whatever it happens to be, and you bring it back and it's completely tangled and the fish can't even get close to the bait. Or if they do, they're feeling resistance straight away from the feeder. The idea behind the stopper bead with the feeder is if you think about it, a big bream bends down, picks the bait up. If it's fixed, it'll feel resistant straight away and chances are it'll spit it out. This way it can bend down, pick the bait up, start turning sideways, it then feels the resistance. Well, bream don't think as cleverly as we do. It's not gonna to move towards the resistance, it's gonna move away from it. And that's it, it's nailed and it's in the net a few minutes later. All right, cast out and I'll get back to you with the next rig. So this is my next rig. Um, it's an eight mil drilled krill uh, pellet. Um, I don't know if you can see it's a little bit shiny. What I do is I buy some of that calder shrink wrap and I just shrink a sleeve of it, literally about three mil round. I don't know if you heard that. I just had my first indication. The rod's been out there a minute. Um, oh, and again, uh, with a bit of fake sweet corn, but I've cut the sweet corn down so that it's kind of eight mil as well. The hook is a size 7 uh, Drenham Barbel hook, um, very sharp, I trust them. 
Now, I don't know if you can see the silicone on the hook itself, that silicone sleeve. So that works in two ways. It's blowback, so if a fish just picked the bait up and spat it out, and that sleeve will blow back to the knot. The other aspect of this is when the fish picks the bait up, the last thing I want it to do with its top lip, which is where it's most sensitive, is taste a piece of metal. Um, chances are they'll pick the bait up, it'll all go in in one go. But having that just, if they're a bit moody, they're not really having it, not really picking it up properly, they won't be spooked by that taste of metal. Um, I'm sure you've all had a bit of silver foil in your mouth um, and it's horrible. Um, so yeah, it might be a bit over the top, but I'm just being over cautious. Going back to the shrink rack, it, basically that pellet, particularly in the summer, will break down in an hour. Fish touches it, falls apart. You're left with no bait other than a bit of floating sweet corn. Uh, and they don't particularly like a pop-up bait, although, you know, fish have been caught on pop-ups. Putting the sleeve on it means it can be out there for eight, 10, 12 hours. There'll always be some bait left because that protects it from breaking down completely. That's times by 10 in the winter. That bait could sit out there for 24 hours and it would still be the same, same shape. Similar consistency, yeah, it's taken on a bit of water, but I'm fishing. And the last thing you want on a long haul session in the winter is having something out there um, <laughs> and you haven't got any bait on the hook. All right, get back to you when I get my rods out. So, rods are out. This is a view from my bivvy conditions are, are decent I mean bearing in mind it rained all night last night got a bit of sunshine it's gone up to 12 degrees the water temperatures 7.1 which is an increase on last week a little bit there was a bit more color in the water last week it's a, a little bit clearer this week I don't know if you're gonna be able to see you can see some remnants on the bottom. Last week it was really cloudy. They were pumping in uh, from the Gippen and because there was a lot of rainwater in the Gippen it was running like uh, drinking chocolate and uh, as a result this end ended up like drinking chocolate. I don't think it will affect the fish too much once the uh, light starts to drop but with the sun out it might just make it a little bit quieter, a little fish a little bit more timid. But remember, I'm only fishing in 12 and a half foot of water, um, and that sunlight will penetrate through and put fish off. They're quite nocturnal this end. Um, I found even in the, even in the summer months, you can fish down here, not get a beep all day long. Uh, as soon as the sun drops below the trees on the far bank, which it will do at some point, um, it's like a light switch, quite literally, excuse the pun, but uh, the fish will start feeding, um, and that's what I'm hoping for today. So I'll get back to you when and if I catch a fish. Um, that's going to be fun, trying to video it and land it at the same time. I could do with a full fan or one of those GoPros. That'll be the next step. Doing it on my phone at the moment. Speak to you soon. So I'm going to talk a little bit about my ground bait. So, so the reason I put a mixture of balls and spots out is with a bit of wind like this, um, invariably on a place like Auckland as big as it, you're going to get a lot of tow, a lot of movement. So I want to know that some of it's getting down to the bottom exactly where I'm putting it. Um, I, I always uh, catapult out to my marker float and fortunately I'm pretty accurate that, with that. I probably ought to take up golf my cold nation's not bad um anyway like i said i put six balls out they were quite hard and dense so i wanted to go straight down i then put i make some more ground bait up for the spod mix and it's a bit looser and the idea of putting three spots is i put them upstream of the toe if that makes sense and i want to create a scent trail because if there's any fish not close to me um you see the sun's coming out <laughs> which is very nice um, yeah uh, I want it to, uh, I want to just attract the fish if they do decide to move about um, which they seem to be doing 
certainly going by last week was a lot better than the week before and similarly that was better than the week before so with the water temperature warming up fish are getting a little more active um, and then comes when I put my ground bait in my, in my feeder um, I want it loose I want the feeder to hit the bottom and the ground bait to break straight out and I'll show you what it's like see it's quite loose um, yeah quite dusty um, uh, and the idea is is that the feeder hits the bottom and where I've pushed some of the, the hook length inside the feeder the, the bait is very close to the feeder and you'll get a puff of ground bait come out cover the hook bait and if the fish move, do mooch about on the on the ground bait they'll find the and because it's really small there's not much in there the biggest thing in there is a few grains of sweet corn they'll come across something more substantial either a pellet um, with the corn or a worm with the corn either way a bit more substantial and might just make a difference another interesting point about uh, feeder ground bait in the feeder is particularly in the summer months you could sit there for half an hour and not get a beep you recast and within 30 seconds you'll get a bite and this happens so often and what I think it is is the fish when they're not feeding or not really going for it they're sitting about a foot foot and a half two foot off the bottom and they'll see that feeder go through and because for the last 50 years these breeding here have had feeders going on top of their heads and they know it's food it's like a dinner bell to them they hear it at the surface they watch it drop down they follow it to the bottom, just the same as a roach will with maggots or a perch or what a rud, whatever it happens to be. They follow that feeder down, bang, straight away. So if you're here in the summer and you know you've got fish in front of you and you're not getting bites, keep recasting. Not a ridiculous amount of time, just sort of every 15 minutes, maybe half an hour if it's a little bit slower. But you'll find nine times out of ten, you'll get bite within 30 seconds or a minute. It's interesting, I've had indications on all three rods and all indications came within a minute, 30 seconds, minute and a half of me casting out. Subsequently now I'm sitting there on my hands, rods are not moving. And so my thought process immediately is, well, let's see if I can trigger a bite, trigger an indication. It's not the right time of day, certainly not with the sun out to really be thinking about getting a bite but you know what it's no good just thinking about it if you think it try it because if it works that's another thing added to your armory i'll get back to you when and if it works i'm going to recast now <laughs> not just saying it sorry last light see my middle rod just had a decent indication on that. Wind's dropped, conditions are perfect. It's about nine degrees Celsius, so it's quite pleasant. And I rather suspect, as soon as the light goes completely, I'll get a better indication, hopefully they're fish. Uh, speak to you as soon as I, I do, or when I do, or if I do. At some point, I'm sure I will. Feeling, feeling confident. So, just as the light went, just as I predicted, uh, here's my first fish, not particularly big, um, complete and see, uh, trying to light on it, just about six, seven pound I guess, something like that, but it's the start and it's the first fish, so happy days with that, let's see if I can uh, give you a close up of it. Uh, another decent fish, not massive, but I guess that's getting on for eight pound, eight and a half pound. Nice thick fish again. Um, very good nick. Yeah, happy with that. That's my fifth fish of the night. So it's uh, one o'clock in the morning. Well. 20 past and I've just had five fish in 20 minutes 
Um, frustratingly though, the best of them five was eight pound. Uh, the rest of them were four or five pound. So I've switched one rod to a boilie 12 mil uh, with a bit of pink corn pop up. And I've switched the other rod to two eight mil krill pellets. Again, with a bit of pink corn pop up on the end. So let's see what happens. Uh, it's when the moon's suddenly gone behind the cloud. And it's not a full moon, it's uh, just over half. Um, the fish just switched on. I have to say the moon was very bright. This is a very clear night. So whether that was affecting the fish a little bit. Uh, yeah, I had fish earlier. I've had uh, 11 in total now. Uh, no, 10 in total now. Um, but five in 20 minutes, <laughs> considering it's middle, still the middle of February. Uh, it's a bit mad, and I think I've just got a few small fish have moved in. So hopefully my change of tactics might uh, might make a difference. Uh, we'll report back soon. The first light, flat calm, as you can see. Um, I don't know why it looks so red. <laughs> Maybe that's a, a sign of uh, the rain to come, I don't know. Um, 19 fish in total. I had half a dozen around a four to six pound bracket, which uh, obviously means the smaller fish have started moving. Uh, the last three weeks, I haven't had a fish under eight. The best fish I had this week was nine five. I had two more fish, just scraped nine pound. Um, very busy night, not a lot of sleep. Um, I'm going to start packing up shortly, uh, get home. Or at least get back in my car before it starts raining, which is, uh, they're saying, around 9 o'clock. Anyway, hope you've enjoyed viewing this um, as much as I've enjoyed putting it together. First time for everything, and uh, hopefully I'll get better at it. Speak to you soon. Another fish around the eight-pound mark. Decent condition again. Nice fish. Big paddle at the back. Great nick, consider it's February, 20 bream. Basically, that's the only fish I've had in daylight in the last three weeks. So, uh, so things are looking up good for the day anglers. So hopefully you get down here and catch a few. Like I said before, all on worm. <laughs>